Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, California Resources Corporation, Kern County Water Agency, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, and Bakersfield City School District. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. Good afternoon, welcome. We are here live at Douglas K. Fletcher Elementary School, home of the Flyers, and today we're here to... Do the Well, good afternoon and welcome to Do The Math. I'm Michael. I'm Don. And I'm Chuck. And here's Mary Lou with our phone tutors. Well, thank you. Today in the tutor studio, it is myself and April, and we're here waiting your calls to answer your math questions. And if you're calling from Bakersfield, you could call us at 636-4357, or you could call us from San Luis Obispo, toll free at one 866 Six three six six two eight four. You can't get to the phone. Well, then email us at do the math at kern org, or you could watch us online at do the math online dot net. We are also on Facebook, so check us out on Facebook. Back to you, Mike. All right. Thank you very much for that, Mary Lou. Speaking of the uh, email, we have a little something to address with that in a little while. Nice yes. to see that Devin has a lot of students yes. out there at Fletcher with him because we need to work him today <laughs> and we'll make sure that he has a lot of math problems that they're going to work on over there at Fletcher Elementary School. Anyway, before we get to our phone calls and our next visit out to the school, let's first take a look at today's Math in the News. All right, today's math in the news, this was torn right out of the back page of the magazine. Uh, the California Educator, sent by a CTA. Oh, okay. So this was in the uh, very back of this. There's one with uh, places in California as far as cities and things like that, but we're not concerned with that. So we're mm -hmm. going to take a look at the mathematics yeah, expressions that they have. So they have an example up there where they put a couple letters up there, and it comes out to be decimal point. So, boys, I'm going to leave this one to you. Number one. Take a look at the letters we have right there. And what do you think that comes out to be? So it looks like they just took all of the vowels out and gave us the consonants, huh? Right. So it looks like long division. Long division is correct. Ding, ding, ding. Chuck's got one. You might have it out there, Don. It's a competition. Let's go. All right. So we'll give you a shot at this. And if you don't get it, then Chuck can go ahead, too. So Hard a bit of a glare on there. Let's see if we can move yeah, it around a little bit. Of a glare. There, there go. we go. That was that a little bit easier? Yeah. S Q R R T. Q R R T? Whoa. S Q R R T. Well, it's got to be square root. Square there you go, there. square root. All right, we're tied at one. All right, there, Chuck. You're on the next one. Well, third wait. one's uh, third <laughs> one's. I'm a geometry teacher, so that's uh, a right angle. Right angle is right. Correct on that one. All right, Don. Let's see. Oh, Take a look at the next one. Put the pressure on me. Prime number. Prime number it is. All right. Take a look at the next one. There's a C at the beginning of that. Okay, that's got to be common denominator. Common denominator it is. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. Final one. Okay, B-S-L-T-V-L. B-S-L. Boy, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on this one. Um, Baseline. Uh, no. Oh, I got it. 
I got it. Uh, no, hold on. Before you do it, because I know there's some people probably playing along at home, and then Don and we've got the other people playing along here. All of the other ones started with a letter that they gave us. It started with a consonant. Right. This one doesn't. doesn't. So you're going to have to put a vowel in front of that. Got it. Which is what made that one a little more difficult. You got an idea or are we just going to... Oh, the, let's, let's let... Solve the puzzle, please. It's absolute value. Absolute uh, value is absolutely got, correct. Got there you go. That those, is the one all that... All those vowels in there. I absolutely missed The tricky yeah. one right there. So I figured, hey, you know what? In that magazine, they've got That's something good. with math in there. We'll go ahead and oh. use it for our math in the news. That is today's math in the news. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available on Tuesdays and Wednesdays between 3.30 and 5.30. And as a bonus, every time you phone in to do the math and we do one of your math problems on TV, your name is entered into a drawing. And that drawing every single day is for a family four-pack to go see the Bakersfield Condors. Great that we had a uh, guest from the Condors in last week. Mm -hmm. I think they had a preseason game over the last weekend, and this weekend is the opening really? for the Condors good. season. So uh, who knows? You might be able to get some free tickets and... I, I didn't realize until he came that, that day that there's an um, AHL team in San Jose. You know, besides right. the Sharks with the NHL, there's the San Jose I'm not sure what the Barracudas team is. Is that it? I think it's the Barracudas. All right. Well, they'll be here sometime. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the phones right now with Jose from Mountain View. Jose, how are you today? Hello, Jose. Hello. What grade are you in? Eighth grade. All right. As soon as you're ready, let's hear the math problem that you're working on. Okay. Excuse me? You can go ahead and start. Okay. Um, four less than five times a number is equal to 11. Okay. What was it again, Jose? You want me to read it again? Please. Hello? Yes. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead and four read Four less than five times a number is equal to 11. Four less than five times a number. Yes. And that is equal to 11. Number is equal to 11. Right, so I wanted to hit that. Is equal Two, eleven. Okay. So, <clears throat> how I start start mine when when it's in word form, I know this is four less than. Now. Excuse me, I can't hear you. Okay, let's see if I can get you up a little bit higher in my my stuff here. Okay. We have four less than. Does it say is less than or just four less than? Four less. Yeah, five, we don't five, have an eight. is. Yeah, see, there's no is. If there was a is less than, with that word is right here, that would give it this symbol. But it doesn't have that. So I know that, that this means minus. Okay? Yes. And we have five times a number. We don't know the number, so we'll just call it n. So we'll call that 5n. So how to write four less than five n? So what I'm going to do, Jose, is I'm going to write five n, and then it says less than four. Now that's just this first part right here. Okay. Now we have an is equal to. So we just put that in, equal to. And then we have the number eleven. Do we have to solve this one too? No. We just have to write write the formula. Oh, no, you have to solve it. Okay. So can you tell me what the first step after I've got it written out, what we need to do? I think you need to... Hold on, hold on. You have to add... Um, I kind of look at this part right here. Add four to both sides to this one? Yeah. I do the opposite of adding four. Or subtracting four, I mean. So I'm going to add four here, and what I do to this side of the equal sign, I also do to the other side. To the other side. 
make that four look a little bit better. Close enough. That gives us 5n equals, what is 11 plus 4? 15. 15, yeah. Okay. Now, I have 5 times a number, and I have an answer. Anytime you have something like that, you have a known times an unknown with an answer, all you have to do is divide both sides of the equal sign by the known number, which is what? Excuse me? What's the known number here that we have? Five. Five. You, I, you, you divide it. Yeah, that's what I just did. The fraction is a division symbol, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So now I have n equals what? What's 15 divided by 5? I think you get a decimal. I'm not sure. Okay, what we have is, let's erase some of this over here. We'll go over here. Oh. Uh. Get some of these dark marks out of the way. I should get a larger thing, but I'm not going to. Okay. What we have is 5n equals 15. And what we did, we're going to divide it, so I'm just writing a fraction bar underneath each number, by my known number, which is 5, isn't it? Yes. Okay, how many times does 5 go into 5? One time. One time. So they cancel out. So 1 times n is n. Yes. Now I have a fraction over 15 fifths. Three times. That goes three times. Yeah, all, all it is, we just have to reduce it, huh? Yes. So n is 3. And there we are. All right, okay. nicely done, Jose. Do you have other problems like that you need to work on? All right. Well, you know, remember, we have phone tutors available until 530 if you have some more problems like that. Jose's got himself entered into the drawing now. Okay. You'll see the condors. Who knows? He could be there for opening weekend. 636-4357 is the phone number. Don't forget, if you have some friends and they're like, well, I'd like to watch Do the Math, or I used to watch it on cable, and we don't have that cable anymore, online at dothemathonline.net. That way you can view the program wherever you are. You can be traveling all around. Mm -hmm. Speaking of traveling all around, email is one thing that you can do to yes. stay in touch with people all around. Anywhere, right. And there are some people that uh, got a hold of us as far as email and stuff like that. So we're going to take a look at one of those problems in just a minute. Sure. But first what we're going to do is we're going to get ready. We're going to go back out to Fletcher Elementary School with Devin. Thanks a lot. Back here at Fletcher Elementary. We're here with Reese. Reese, how have things been so far this year? Um, good. I like the school year and I made some new friends. How's this been? Is this your first year at Fletcher? No, it's my second. Oh, so you've been here since the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a great experience here so far? Yeah. What's been the best part about being here at Fletcher? Uh, my friends from Chavez come in. Okay. Oh, good. So that you have the opportunity to meet a lot of other people along the way. Well, we're here at fourth grade math and uh, you pulled some problems, uh, just straight up addition subtraction. And we talked about problems like this because there's a lot of different ways that we're learning about how to do this. So let's go ahead and take a look at addition. Um, could you go ahead and uh, just explain this problem here, what the problem is, and then um, if you could talk out loud about how to do that. Um, this is an addition problem. Um, I'm doing 21,000, 184 plus 2,259. Okay, and I, I thought it's interesting how you started with the number that was on the bottom. In addition, it, it is reversible, right? You could do it in either direction because you can switch the numbers around. So go ahead and work through this problem and show us how you do this. So I would start in the ones place. Nine plus four is 13. So I drop the one. Eight plus five is 13 plus one is 14. I have the one. Two plus one is three plus the one is four. Then I put a comma. 2 plus 1 is 3, and 2 plus 0 is 2. So that means the solution here, we're looking at 23,443. Um, one of the things that we talk about with proficient math students is the idea that when they check work, 
it's not necessarily just doing the problem again and getting the same answer, but doing it a second way. So, you know, one of the things I know in, in Bakersfield that a lot of the teachers are really starting to do this year is use other means of addition. So um, we can actually do the same problem using something called an open number line. And when we think of number lines, we usually have to mark every single number along the way, put arrows at the end. But an open number line, if it's open, we have the option to make as many jumps and the size of our jumps is up to us. So we know that in addition, we are starting at 2,259. If you think about what addition is on a number line, it's when you start one number and you go in this direction, the second number. So you can do that with either of these. And you said 21,184 first. So let's start off with 21,184. We know that if we go 2,259 places this way, we'll eventually get to our solution. And if it's 23,443, we know that it's the correct answer. So let's work with 2,259. How much of 2,259 would you like to jump at once? Maybe 2,000? Let's jump 2,000. And what a lot of students do, Reese, what, exactly what you did there, they go by the place value. So they start off with the base to get that out of the way. So let's jump by 2,000. Now, if we add 2,000 to 21,184, we have 21,000 plus 2,000. What does that bring us to then? 4,000. Um, well, hold on a second. 41,000. Well, it sounds like you're adding 20,000. But we're only jumping by 2,000 here, right? So if we work down the lines um, just by place value, here is where we're starting to combine the thousands place. So that 1,000 and 2,000 would add up to 3,000. 3, and then what about the 10,000s place value? Nothing? That stays the two. That stays the same. So we're at 23,184. Okay, well, we're at 2,000. We still have 259 to go. How much would you like to jump now? 200. Let's jump 200. So if we have 200 to 23,184, the place values are the same for the ones, the tens, and now we're at the hundreds. What is going to be our new hundreds place? Um, three. Three. And then everything stays the same with the others, mm -hmm. right? You're starting to see kind of a pattern of how this is taking shape. So we're at 23,384. Okay. What do you think our next jump is going to be? 50. Let's add 50 to that. Now, adding 50 to this might be a little tough. We may have to do some regrouping. Um, but we can work through this as well. So let's add 50. Now, the ones is going to be the same. What's going to happen with this tens place if we have 85? Um, it's going to become 13, so we have to regroup. Okay, so we'll regroup. We'll bring the 3 into the tens place. We have another 10 tens, which is 100. So we'll bring that over here. So 1 plus 3 is 4. Great. And then the other place values remain the same. So now we're at 23,434. Now, how many do we still have left to add? Nine. Nine. So we're just going to add nine to this 23,434. When we do that, we're starting right away. And now, you don't have to add all nine, by the way, right at once, right? If you want to get to an easy number to work with, maybe we just add six out of that nine. Because if we do that, four plus six is a 10, and 10s are always really easy to work with. So we can bring one 10 over here to the tens place, and then just down the line easily. And now all that's left, we already added six out of that nine. How many more do we add that's left? Three. Three, so we just add another three to 23,440. So zero plus three is three. And the numbers all stay the same. So we got 23,443, just like you did when you did it this way. Now. Is this a fast way to do this? Um, it could be, but there's another way I do it. Let's see that another way, because if you can do a problem three ways, then you know for a fact that you have the correct solution. So I would take my answer, and then I would um, take one of my numbers, like 21,184. And then I would subtract it. Um, 3 minus 4 I can't do, so that becomes a 3. It becomes a 13. 13 minus 4 is 9. 3 minus 8 I can't do, so that becomes a 3. 
that becomes a 13. 8 minus 13 is um, 5. 3 minus 1 is 2. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. And that is the same as my top number. So using the properties of addition and subtraction, you're able to identify that your original solution, if you took away one of the add-ends, you get the other add-ends. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's great. That is a, a concept of the relationship between addition and subtraction that Reese is able to use to prove her solution and justify her reasoning. Do you have to ask any teachers if this is the right answer? No, because I checked it with subtraction. Reese, wonderful work here. We're going to check back in a little bit later on with another Fletcher student for another math problem. Continuing to look at the different ways to prove that an answer is all we need. Back to you, right. So we'll get back to those guys in a little bit. Nice how they can do the uh, same problem a couple of different ways. And even better that the young lady knew how to check her problem yes. without having to uh, go through another process. She knows that you're adding and just subtract one of those numbers. Check it. You're all through. Good. All right. As a reminder, you can always go on Facebook or YouTube and look up any of the programs. So there are students that have been on and they're like, oh, I remember we did a problem like that, but I need to see it again. You can always go, just look up the day of the program, look that up on Facebook or YouTube. You can always view the program at your leisure, wherever you are. Getting back to the email. Mm -hmm. So we had a, a couple of students email us with some math problems. So Chuck, why don't you go ahead and take care of that first one that was uh, emailed to us. Okay, one of them was, um uh, recursion problem and it, that means that it's a, a sequence of numbers and they give them a starting number and so in this problem they said that the starting number that's a sub zero is two and then they give them a rule for the next number and you keep using this rule to get the, the numbers and your answer is just going to be a sequence of numbers and it, it keeps going and so the rule that that I got from the email looks like this and I was trying to make sure that I got the subscripts right and the notation. It looked like it said a sub n is equal to n squared minus 3n and then I had to look at this one and it was plus 2a and from what I saw in the notation the n minus 1 is another subscript. So I'm going to put the counting numbers starting with 1 because this is where I'm going to start my sequence and then I'm going to let n equal 1, I'm going to let n equal 2, n equal 3 and substitute it into this recursive formula. So I would use this formula and I would say that a sub 1 is when n equals 1, when n equals 1, I get 1 squared minus 3 times 1 plus 2 times, now a sub, if n is 1, a sub n is 1, and when a is 1, n minus 1 is 0, so this is going to be a sub 0, which we know is 2, and so that's why this is called recursive, because it uses the previous number to get the next number. And I know that a sub 0 is 2, so I'm going to get 1 squared, which is 1, minus 3 times 1, which is 3, plus 2 times, and my starting number was 2, so this is going to be 1 minus 3 plus 4, and that looks like that's going to be 2, which means, so now I'm going to change it, and I'm going to let now, I know that a sub 1 is 2, so I'm going to now let n equals 2 and see what happens. I get a sub 2, and now I'm going to replace n with 2 in this problem, and I get n squared, which is 2 squared, minus 3 times 2, plus 2 times, now I've got 2 minus 1, so this is going to be a sub 1. So that's going to be 4 minus 6 plus 2 times a sub 1 was 2 also, so that's going to be 4 minus 6 plus 4, and that looks like 8 minus 6, that looks like 
two again. So it looks like my, my recursive sequence is a sub zero is two, a sub one is two, a sub two is also two, it looks like I'm in a rut here. I'll, I'll try right. one more and see if it's going to okay. change. I don't think it's going to change, but let's try one more and get, let's try when n is 3 and see if this works also. So a sub 3 is going to be, I need my formula here, is going to be 3 squared minus 3 times uh, n is 3 times 3 plus 2 times the previous number, which is going to be a sub 2, which we know is 2. And so what do I get? I get, well, let's see. I get 3 squared is 9 minus 3 times 3, which is 9, plus 2 times 2, which is 4. And so I got a different number. I got 4. So all we're doing here is using the previous answer to get the next answer. That's why it's called recursive. And so it looks like we get a sub 3 is equal to 4. And then it's going to change from there on. All right. So that's what it looks like. 2, 2, 2, and then 4, and then he can work out the next one. But it looked like this was the, that was the problem, I think, with the uh, right, well, then trying to send that formula. through an email yeah. without the proper yeah. scripts and things mm -hmm. like that. So hopefully that helps out the student. And as a reminder, uh, I, we sent back an email replying saying, just mm -hmm. look at the October 6th program and everything will be worked out for you. We're going to check out Kendrick, or not Kendrick, why did I say Kendrick again? I know that we had a student <laughs> from Kendrick call probably, and we had a guest from Kendrick on. Right. But anyway, we'll check in with Fletcher again right after this. Well, today we're on the Central Coast. We're in San Luis Obispo enjoying the beautiful weather. We're at C.L. Smith Elementary School, and today we're here to... Well, today we're at C.L. Smith Elementary School in San Luis Obispo, and I've got the hardest working sixth grader Matthias, you ready? Of course. I've got a wonderful problem for you. Wonderful. All right, here we go. You drink a lot of coffee? No. Good, you don't need to yet. Yay. Coffee and donut, you like donuts? Yes. Well, so do I. Coffee and donut cost $3.10. Mm -hmm. If we get a donut and a milk, it's gonna cost $3.60. Mm -hmm. If we get a coffee, a donut, and a milk, it's gonna cost five thirty-five. Okay. I would like you to find out how much the milk is. So, using all of this information, how do you think we can go about doing this? Well, we can do subtraction. That much I know. Okay. So, I think if we do it like this, minus three, and don't have anything to subtract from there, so it's five. One mi three minus one equals two. Little dot for fanciness. Um, five times five minus three, excuse me, is two. So now we have reason to believe that the milk is two two dollars and twenty five cents. Now, you said you put the decimal point there for fanciness. Why is it really there? Um, so that we can divide um, the, do the actual dollars from the cents. Right. Okay, so that's why it's there. I mean, it may look nice and fancy, but it is there for a specific reason. Okay. So you're saying that the milk is going to cost $2.25. Mm-hmm. So let's go ahead and take a look at the models that we have here. We know that... It, Coffee and donut is 310. The donut and the milk is 360. Now, if the donut and the milk are 360, we know that the coffee, you're saying, is 225. Mm -hmm. Right? How can you check to make sure that that works? Hmm. 
Hmm. We could check back on our work. Well, we could. All right, so look, you're saying milk is two and a quarter, right? So if this is 225, how much is the donut? Can you figure that out? Yeah. How would you figure it out? And then two minus one equals one. All right, so we're going to say the coffee is $1.75. So we have all three of our prices down here, and we want to make sure that your milk is the correct number. So if we add all of these up, what should we get? Five three. $5.35. All right, so let's go ahead and add them all up. $1.75. $1.75. Plus $1.35. $1.35. And $2.25. $2.25. And we're going to add all of those up. So 5 plus 5 plus 5 equals 15, but we can't put 15 here, so we will put 5. And then we will put the 10 up. Very nice. So 1 plus 7 equals 8. 8 plus 3 equals 11. And 11 plus 2 equals 13. Okay. Again, we can't write 13 here, so we will do that. So the decimal. We will do 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2, which equals 5. And it did come out to be 535, didn't it? So what was the cost of the milk? The cost of the milk. That's what you said. Um, the cost of the milk was two twenty-five. Right, which is what you originally had, but just in order to make sure, this is how we go about it to check it and make sure that you were right. Mm -hmm. That wasn't too hard of a problem, was it? It was pretty hard. But we got through it. Mm -hmm. Nicely done, Matthias. Way to go. And once again, a big thank you to all of the students out at that school and the staff. Just a pleasure to work with all of those kids out there. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530 on Tuesdays and Wednesdays throughout most of the school year. Right now, we're going to go to the phones. Coral, how are you today? Hello, Coral. Hello. Hi. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm wonderful myself. You're a student at Old River Elementary. What grade are you in? I'm in sixth grade. All right. As soon as you're ready, let's hear the math problems that you're working on. Okay. How you doing, Carl? This is Don. It's Good. Coral, How are you? right? Yeah. Okay. What what problem are we working on? What? What's our problem that we're working on? Um, uh, it's a math problem from a test that I did and I want to correct. Okay. And it is negative four. Negative four. And then parentheses. A. Eight. A. A. Plus three. Plus three. End of parentheses. Yes, end of the parentheses. Anything else? Yes, negative A. Negative eight. Or A. A. A again. A. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. Okay, here we go. Okay, what we want to do is distribute this problem right here, this negative 4, we're going to multiply it times A and also times 3. What is negative 4 times A? Um, negative 4A? Negative 4A, yeah. Okay, what is negative 4 times 3 now? Negative 12A. Negative, or negative 12. 12, yeah, not A. Okay, now notice I didn't bring down my parentheses anymore, did I? So yeah. we've got this, so I bring down this next one, minus A. Yeah, come on, 
we can come back here. We'll get just get rid of him. He, he doesn't want to go around here. Minus. I'd say just eliminate hey, and put a new yeah, one. Yeah, we'll just eliminate it. <laughs> okay, we have like terms right here and here, don't we? Aren't those like terms? Because this is negative 4a and this one's negative a. I yes. can combine those together, can't I? Yeah. So I could actually say negative 4a minus a minus 12. I just kind of rewrote that whole thing, didn't I? Yeah. What is negative 4a minus a? Negative, three, negative 4a? Oh, I've got negative 4a minus a. That's actually 1a right here, isn't it? Oh, yes. What's negative, negative 4 three. minus 1? Negative, negative 3. Negative 5. Oh. Because, yeah, remember we got on a number line? If we're at negative 4 and I subtract 1, I'm at negative 5? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we have negative 5a minus 12. Can I do anything more? No. No, I can't. So this this is as far as I can go, isn't it? Yes. Now, are okay. you still on the line there, Coral? I am. All right. Do you have another problem like that? Because it seemed like you had a little difficulty with the negative 4 and the minus 1. Do you have another problem on your paper like that? Yes, I do. All right. Let's go ahead and work on that one as well. Okay. okay. So, 3... Three. Parentheses 2K. 2K. Plus 4. Plus 6. Plus 6. Parentheses negative 1. Negative 1. 5K. Plus 5K? No, just 5K. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Where I meant Not right negative here. one. Just negative 5k. Oh, just negative 5k. Okay. And then end of parentheses. Yeah, you're going to need a k after that 5. Minus? Parentheses. Negative 8. Negative 8? Yes. Okay. And then the end of the parentheses. End of the parentheses. Oh. All right, read it again, Coral, because I think we're missing a K or something else up there. So read it one more time. Okay. Three parentheses, 2K plus four parentheses, plus six parentheses, minus 5K parentheses, Minus parentheses negative eight. Okay, yeah. We were missing a K in there, the negative five K. Okay. Okay. Well what do you think would be the best way to start here? What what do you think? Um three times two K. How about if we take this and distribute this here and here? Can we do that? What? Distribute the 3 into these two numbers. We're going to multiply it. What is 3 yes. times 2K? 5K? I no. mean, 6K? Very good. 6K. What is 3 times 4? 12. 12. Now we're going to, do the, we're going to multiply this because we, before we can do any addition, we have to do all of our multiplication, don't we? What is 6 times negative 5K? Um, negative 30K. Very good. What is, even though you don't see it, there's a 1 right there. What is negative what? 1? There's a 1 right here in front of this parentheses that you don't see. That's why I put it in red. What's a negative... 
1 times a negative 8. Okay. What so is that it? Would be positive 8? Positive 8. Okay, so I've got this written down now. I have a like term here and here, another like term here and here. So my first set of like terms is 6k and negative 30k. Can I add those together? Yes. And what would that give me? Negative 24k. Beautiful job. 24 Okay. Now I have my other like terms, which is 12 and 8. What is 12 plus 8? 20. 20. So I have plus 20. Can I work this down anymore? I don't think what? so. I can't work this anymore, can I? No. And that's it simplified, isn't it? Yes. Okay. There All right, are. nicely done, negative 24K plus 20. Coral, if you're still online, I'd like to let you know that you are now the recipient of a meal courtesy of our friends at Johnny Rockets in the Marketplace. So congratulations, you get yourself a uh, free meal over there. Nice. Say hi to Lydia when you visit. 636-4357 <laughs> is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530. Right now, let's head back out to Fletcher Elementary School with Devin. Hey, thanks a lot. We're back here at Fletcher Elementary. After school program, active live. Kids are working. Um, they stopped talking since they came back on the air, but they are wonderful collaborators working together, solving problems. That's what school's all about these days. Hey, let's head on back over to the board. We've got Miguel here. Miguel, it's good to see you. Miguel, you and I have a connection in the sense that I worked with your brother Christian last year. Do you want to say anything to Christian while you got the chance? Um, no, no. Where really. are you, Christian? So we're here right now, and we're talking about multiplication. Um, Miguel, you're, you're working on multiplication tables. I know that's really important in fourth grade. And you mentioned that there was a group of them that were kind of tough, the 12s, yeah. correct? So we started talking about different ways in which we look at multiplication. So we talked about a problem, and maybe we'll do one up here, how we had, um, let's say, 12 times 6. And in the past, if you didn't know that fact, what would you have to do to remember it? You'd have to actually just multiply it down the line, yeah. right? So we talked about using rectangles. Um, if you think about when you've done area in the past, you've had to find a rectangle that was, let's say, six tall, or six wide, and three long, right? And you would multiply those to get them together for an area in the middle of your team, right? So let's say we have another rectangle on the side that was four wide, and three tall. Well, four times three is 12. Now, if you add the two areas together, you get something like 30, correct? Yeah. Now, if you were to bring these together to form one big rectangle, that rectangle, how long would it be across? It would be so we have, 30. Well, across, just the top, right? Across the top, right? If we have the top length of six and the top length of four and we bring them together, now how long are the two connected together? So six times four? Well, we're not necessarily multiplying. We're not doing six plus six plus six plus six. We're just oh. adding these two rectangles together side by side, right? So the length of this one plus the length of this one, right? We're adding these two oh. rectangles together. So if we have a length of six and a length of four, how long would that new rectangle be? Ten. Ten, right? Now, have we changed the height of this rectangle at all? No. No, it's still three tall, right? So how would we find the area of this newer, longer rectangle? Um. If it's 10 long and three tall, what would we do to the length and the width? You multiply it. Yeah, we're just multiplying. So 10 times three equals? 30. Yeah. So what we notice is that we can treat multiplication just like this, too, if we want to start breaking this up. So let's take this problem of 12 and 6, okay? So we have a rectangle here, and it's 12 long and 6 wide. But instead of thinking about this like 12, how could we think about this 12? How could we break we can, that up into smaller rectangles? We can put a 10 right here and split it up. So we're going to say that this is 10, and now if we have 10, how much is left until the whole thing is 12? It's You put a 2 here. A 2, right? So let's go ahead and multiply these two rectangles and find out what their areas are. So, so 6 times 
10 times 6 is 60, and 6 times 2 is 12. So if we add those two together, 60 plus 12? It's 72. 72. 6 times 12 is 72. So we use area for rectangles to help us if we're struggling with math facts because this is a representation of what multiplication really is. Okay? So let's try this with another notorious 12 multiple. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and see if, if you can try to visualize this, Miguel, here. Let's do 12 times 9. 12 okay? times 9. Go ahead and work on 12 times 9 using rectangles and figure out what 12 times 9 equals. So 12 times 9, 12 times 9 is a rectangle. Then we put the 12. Then this is 3, right? Well, what are we multiplying 12 by here in this problem, remember? Oh, 9. Okay. We split this up, put the 2, then the 10. 10 times 9 is 90, and 2 times 9 is 18. Oh, And then that equals 108. So, 12 times 9 equals 108. 108. This is fascinating. This means that we can break up and represent this problem in another way. Instead of just saying 12 times 9, what we're really saying is 9 times 10 plus 9 times 2. So this is a property of multiplication that very few students really get into until later on down the line, but it's an easier way of breaking up the problem. 9 times 10 and 9 times 2. And we just add them together. Now, do you think this is going to work with values where this would be two digits, where there'd be a tens value, too? Yeah. Do you think this would work down? How do you think that would look? Um, right here? Well, let me give you an example here. Let's try to work this out, okay? What if we had something, and we talked about this during the break, right? What about the 11s? Because a lot of students say that 11s are the easy times table because you're just doubling the number, right? 11 times 3 is 33. 11 times 7 is 77. 11 times 11 is... 121. Right, but a lot of kids always say it's 111, right? Because they just think they double everything. So, a way that we can visualize 11 times 11 is with a little bit of a square. Because 11 times 11 is a square number, right? So if we think of it as a square that's 11 across and 11 tall, well, we can break this square up as well, just like we did with the rectangles. So instead of thinking of this as 11, we can break this down with addition as 10 plus 1. And if we can do this to the top, we can do it. So the height is also going to be 10 plus 1. Now, how many rectangles did we just break this square up into? Two. Look again. Look how Three. many rectangles. Not just rectangles, because remember, squares sometimes count as rectangles, right? Oh, four. So we have four. We have four different multiplications that we can do now. So let's start off with 10 times 10. That's 100. Now let's do 10 times 1. That's 10. We have another 10 times 1 here. 10. And what about this 1 times 1? One? 1. So now if we add all of these together, all the areas that make up the whole square, we have 100, we have 10, we have 10, and we have 1. And that equals 121. That makes a lot more sense with the 11 times table. Here we go. Very nicely done here. So how about we do this? Let's try this with one more, except we get bigger here. We'll keep this a one-digit value, but maybe we stretch out our other number to three digits, because I want to see how you approach this problem with rectangles. OK? Let's go big here. All right? Let's say 232 times 7. And I'm going to ask you to try to use a rectangle to figure this out. OK? Go ahead and give it a shot. Okay. So it's 7 here. This is 200, right? And then split this up. 30. And then 2. So 200 times 7. The 2 times 7 is 14. So that would be 
104. What would it be? Uh, 1,400. There you go. Very good. And I saw you use some rationalization. Well, that's less than 200, so that doesn't sound right. Proficient math students will always question their work as they walk, follow through with it. Continue, please. Um, so 30 times 7 is, 3 times 7 is, um, Remember, multiplication is repeated addition, so you can add 7 to itself three times, right? 7, count by 7. 7s? 14. And then 14 plus 7? 18, 19, 20, 21. 21. 2100. And then? And then 2 times 1 is 14. So then we would add all three of these together. 1400 plus 210 plus 14. So that would be a 4. That'll be a 2, that'll be a 6, and that'll be a 1. 232 times 7, 1,624. Miguel, we shook hands before, now we got a fist bump. That was <laughs> awesome. Hooray! Back, to you, back to you, Mike. All right, nicely done. See Miguel do some multiplication right there. We're going to go back to the phones. Do remember we have phone suitors available until 5.30. Alyssa, how are you today? Um, I'm well. And you're a student at Warren, correct? Are you in 7th or 8th grade? I'm in 8th grade. All right. As soon as you're ready, let's hear that math problem. Okay. Uh, my math problem is um, evaluate, evaluate and compare the following expression. It says um, find the square root of 4 over 25. And I'm sorry. Is the 25 inside the square root also? Yes. It's like the square root of a big fraction, I yes. guess? Okay. Um, but then it says that next to it is 4 squared root over um, the square root of 25. The square root of 4 over the square root of 25? Yes. Square root 4 and then the square root of 25 on the bottom? Yes. Okay. And then the next one is um, 16 over 81 square root. The whole then, thing? One big uh, square root like this? Yes, the whole thing. Okay. And then it's the square root of 16 over the square root of 81, like the one before. And so they want you to evaluate each one of these and, I'm sorry, compare them? Evaluate and compare the following expressions, and I still have one more. I'm sorry, what was the last thing? Uh, the last one? No, no, you said evaluate each expression and... Evaluate and compare the following expression. Okay. All right. So, which one do you want to start with? Um, and let me ask you, how do you evaluate the square root of a fraction? Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? So, the question is, you have the square root of 4 over 25, right? So you're working with the rules for s simplifying square roots, right? Yes. So how do, you, how do you do like any of these? If you wanted to know what's the square root of 4, how do you figure out what the square root of 4 is? Um, by finding a number that uh, multiplied by itself will give you 4. Right. So you want to know what, what number times itself equals 4, right? Yes. So let's, let's, do, the, let's do these two easy ones, right? So what number times itself is 4? 2. That's pretty easy. That's 2 times 2 is 4, right? Yes. And so the square root of 25 is what number times itself is 25, right? Yes. Again, pretty easy. What is that? That's 5. 5 times 5. And we'll give you about 2 minutes to wrap this up. Okay, so we know that this one is 2 over 5, isn't it? Now, let's do this one. How do, you, how do you do this? If we want to do the same thing, I want what number times itself is 4 over 25? Well, it's got to be a fraction, right? Yes. So what fraction times itself equals 4 over 25? 2 over 5. Is it 2 over 5? It is, isn't it? 2 fifths times 2 fifths is 4 25ths. So this fraction is also 2 fifths, isn't it? Yes. So those are both the same. So let's do the same thing. Let's see if it works here. What's the square root of 16? What times what is 16? 
It's four. That's four. Four times four is 16. And what times itself is 81? Nine. That's nine, right? So we know that this is four over nine. Yeah. Now, is this four over nine? What fraction times itself equals 16 over 81? Kind of squeeze it in there. Four over nine. Is that going to be four ninths? So four over nine times four over nine, that's four times four is 16, nine times nine, that's 81. They're both the same, aren't they? So we evaluated all these and we compared them. These first two are the same, aren't they? Yes. And the second two are the same? Yes. And is that what they asked you to do? Evaluate, compare the following expressions. There you go. And we, we, we're done. Great. Thank you. Nicely done, Alyssa, right there. You got your name entered into the drawing for the Bakersfield Condors Family 4-Pack. Right now, we'll go out to the last time to visit with Devin and the rest of the kids at Fletcher. Back here at Fletcher Elementary, wrapping up a great day of math with the after-school program. Ladies and gentlemen, give yourself a round of applause. Great day of work here. So, uh, to... Thank our, our students here at Fletcher for helping us out, Reese, Miguel, and the rest. Uh, we are awarding each of the students as part of our team with a free Happy Meal gift certificate to McDonald's. Congratulations. Enjoy that. Woo! What are they giving away? Hello Kitty, I think, right now? I forget. I, my daughter loves Hello Kitty, so we're going home happy. Also, very important, in addition, we are giving every single one of our participants here joining us at Fletcher a very special collector's item, a, their very own Do the Math t-shirts. Make sure you bring it tomorrow, show off where you've been, who you were with, flash that phone number, know who to call in case you need math homework. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here at Fletcher. T-shirts for everybody, pass them around, nice job. Back to you folks, have a great day. Woo! Yeah. Winners, let's get another winner. We had a lot of great students phoning in this afternoon. Who's going to the Condors? Okay, and it is Jose from Mountain View Middle School. All right, nicely done. Congratulations, Jose. We'll get out that family four-pack to you. Do remember, we have phone tutors available until 5.30 on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And until we meet again, continue to do the math. Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, California Resources Corporation, Kern County Water Agency, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, and Bakersfield City School District. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. <laughs>